was fire that separated man from the animals. Fire that gave him warmth to overcome the cold. Light to pierce the darkness. And in 1969, it was the controlled use of fire that enabled man to make his first landing on the moon. And it was fire that civilized man. For fire not only made food more tasteful and plant life digestible, but far more important, smoked and preserved it. Now man no longer had to gorge himself as soon as he made a fresh kill. Now he could sustain himself between kills. And he could in time be more than a hunter. He could become a farmer, an artist, a writer, a member of a cultured society. Fire elevated man from the animals, and the art of cooking made him civilized. Yet for the past 40,000 years of human history, methods of cooking have remained the same. But now at last in the age of space, and in fact, as part of the fallout from our great technological effort, there are new ways of preparing foods. Freezing to preserve them, and cooking without the application of heat. To see how primitive man prepared his food, we need only travel to the jungles of New Guinea, where the Stone Age still survives. Here, the simplest way of preparing food is to take a fresh kill and dump it in the fire. But by far the best method of primitive cooking is to dig a pit, line it with greenery, and fill it with raw meat and plenty of hot stones. This is the same method as in the New England clam bake, the Western barbecue, and the Hawaiian luau. Finally, the raw meat and hot rocks are sealed with palm fronds and patience, for it will be hours before this banquet will be ready. It also took a long time, about 4,000 years, from the end of the Stone Age to the rise of ancient Rome. Yet this Roman baker, whose portrait and that of his wife is preserved on the walls of his Pompeian bakery, though he had learned to raise his oven above the ground and build it of bricks, still baked very much like Stone Age men, applying a great deal of heat and time to achieve this loaf of bread, which is now 2,000 years old. Seventeen centuries after the death of the Roman baker, Thomas Jefferson, in writing the Declaration of Independence, articulated one of man's great political ideas, freedom. Jefferson was a universal genius, whose design of the University of Virginia and his own house, Monticello, reflected his love of classical design and gracious living. Jefferson was the first American gourmet. It was Jefferson who introduced spaghetti into the American diet, as well as such foods as French fries, asparagus, ice cream, and vanilla flavoring. Some of the finest meals ever served in America were prepared in Jefferson's kitchen. Yet though Jefferson's political ideas were a tremendous advance over the ancient Romans, his food preparation methods were virtually the same involving the same huge applications of labor, heat, and time, with the same inevitable shrinkage and drying out of food. The 19th century's age of iron and steel made cooking by brick hearth obsolete. Relatively cheap and efficient iron ranges could be readily installed in the most modest pioneer cabin or city dweller's apartment. Yet without convenience foods, cooking still involved as much time and heat and almost as much effort as in the Stone Age. And even the modern oven, using either gas or electricity for its heat source, despite all its conveniences, such as electric timer and automatic pilot, as in this 20th century demonstration kitchen, still requires as much heat and time for proper cooking as the brick hearths of ancient Rome. Now, at this history-making moment in which man has first landed on the moon, we are entering a new era in space. And here, at the NASA Manned Spacecraft Center, where the lunar explorers will spend their 21-day isolation period, the NASA Lunar Receiving Laboratory contains not only the most advanced scientific facilities and comfortable living accommodations, but its kitchen, with its reliance on modern frozen foods and microwave and quartz cooking units, is in the forefront of a new era in food preparation. 
microwave cooking units, like those in the NASA Lunar Receiving Laboratory and this test kitchen, are indeed revolutionary. Keep your eye on the chocolate cupcake. It rises faster than you can eat it. For a main course, how about a delicacy like lobster tails? Ready in less than a minute, with no shrinkage or shriveling, since there is no furnace-like blast of heat. This is cooking by microwave, cooking without heat. Yet the kitchen of the NASA Manned Spacecraft Center's Lunar Receiving Laboratory, limited in its space and in the time its personnel can devote to preparing meals, is designed primarily for the rapid heating of previously prepared cuisines, particularly frozen foods. The modern miracle of quartz and microwave ovens are here, coupled with the advances made in modern frozen food technology. The foods consumed in the NASA Lunar Receiving Laboratory are the results of extensive recipe development and research during the past two years in ultra-modern test kitchens. These foods meet or exceed the high standards of quality and purity set by the NASA Manned Spacecraft Center and have been selected for taste appeal by both astronauts and panels of food experts. In short, for those like the astronauts in the Lunar Receiving Laboratory who must have quality food prepared at maximum speed, there is now the perfect marriage, as in this demonstration kitchen, between the freezer and the microwave and quartz ovens. Such frozen foods as soups, vegetables, and these escalloped apples piping hot and ready to serve in a few seconds. Delicious entrees like lobster Newburg, quickly heated to perfection. And desserts frozen solid, like Swiss chocolate cake, thawed and ready to eat in five seconds. It is indeed appropriate that the NASA Lunar Receiving Laboratory is equipped with frozen food facilities and quartz and microwave cooking units. Microwave cooking especially is part of the technological fallout particularly in the field of radar from the past two decades of research and development which has culminated in 1969's landing on the moon. Developed as the basic power unit for all these radar tracking stations is an electron tube, the magnetron, and it was discovered that this same magnetron could be used as the primary power unit in microwave ovens. The magnetron, in short, is an electron tube which transmits microwaves, which are much like radio and television waves. But a TV station transmits microwaves of a selected frequency in all directions, and any TV set tuned to that station's frequency picks up part of the transmitted energy and processes it into sound and pictures. Inside a microwave oven, the magnetron similarly transmits waves of energy. But since microwaves cannot penetrate metal, they are channeled inside a metal pipe, down into the oven cavity. Since the cavity is also walled by metal, there's no place for the microwaves to go, but into the food, whose molecular structure absorbs and converts the energy in the form of heat. Yet the nature of food is such that only the food, like this macaroni and cheese, becomes hot. The metal oven, as well as the glass or paper containers, which are all non-conductors of microwaves, remain cool. The new era in food preparation features quality frozen foods served with unprecedented speed and efficiency. Some of the astronauts' favorite dishes include breast of chicken, beef pie, short ribs, and lobster Newburgh. Not surprisingly, many of them are the same as those available at the local supermarket for cooking in conventional kitchens. We live in an age of unprecedented technological achievements, scientific adventures whose full benefits to mankind cannot as yet be fully foreseen. Yet man's greatest adventure may be more than a monumental landing on the moon. It may well be the ever-increasing acquisition of techniques and knowledge technology that can make the quality of life for all mankind richer and more bountiful.